Hi everybody, Matt Lawton here. This is the Astrological Wings Channel. I'm going to take a look this week at the Astrological Weather Report for July 22nd through 28th. And the main things we've got going on is today, Monday, the sun going into Leo and going into an opposition to Pluto. And then on Thursday, Mercury also changing signs, going into Virgo. Both of them going into strong signs, signs that they like to be in. And then Friday, um, just reminding everyone something that I talked about in the monthly, Chiron will join the retrograde parade. So those are the some of the things I'm going to talk about today. There's some other things too. Um, first off, little business, the Astrological Winds channel is a free video blog that I do every week on YouTube. It's a YouTube channel now too. Um, so if you have a YouTube account and you like what you see, please become a follower and don't forget to turn your notifications on when you do so you know when I post the blog, which is usually every Monday morning. Also, it was a podcast long before it was a blog. It's still out there on podcasts. Buzzsprout distributes it out to about 20 different podcasts or so. Pick it up. Just go to a podcast, um, someone like Apple Eye Podcast. Look up Astrological Winds Channel, and you'll find it there. And that way, if you don't want to be married to the video, you can listen to just the audio portion. And, you know, that frees you up to do it at times you might not be able to squeeze it in at other times, like maybe when you're driving around or you're at the gym or walking the dog or whatever it may be. It gives you an opportunity to hear it, at least, even if you don't get to see the video. And remember, also, the Astrological Wings Channel does have its own Instagram page. Um, I post the link there every week. Sometimes I post additional information that's just commentary during the week, not audio or video. So if you have an um, Instagram page, please become a follower of the Astrological Wings channel there, too. And remember, it's the blog's links are always posted on my website, which is right there, www.astrologicalwings.com. You can go right there hit the link, it'll take you right to the YouTube um, blog. So, um, and also it's on my Facebook, which is a private one, Matthew Lawton. You have to like friend me first before I approve of you. But lots of different ways to get it is my point. And remember, um, this is a free service. Um, please pass it along to somebody else is what I ask you. And if you've done it already, please do it again. I really appreciate that. If you'd like to give a donation to the blog, um, it does cost me a little money to run it. Um, there's my Venmo handle right there. And every $5 you give puts you in for a, for a chance to win a free reading, which I think I'm going to do maybe once a quarter is what I'm thinking right now. Um, so... Please, uh, you know, every, if you'd like to support me that way, please, um, your funding is appreciated. And the best way to support me is I am a professional astrologer. been doing readings for over 20 years. I have a lot of happy clients out there. I'd like you to be one of them, too. Or if you know someone that's looking, you know, looking for some answers, needing to look at their chart, which you have with you your whole life, um, looking for ways to become more self-fulfilled in your life, to really meet your potential please um, you know drop me a line you know my info is right here you can email me here check the website out that has my menu it has all the prices on it um, i also offer weekly monthly and daily readings even for people who are professional and really need the advice every day kind of like an executive assistant to you um um, so, you know, if you're interested in it on that level, drop me a line. Okay, let me get into this now. And remember, if you are not a big knowledgeable with astrology terms, don't get stuck on the terms. You want to hear what they mean. You know, I know a lot of you guys do learn a lot from it, too. And I appreciate that, that you do know some of your astrology. But I know there's some of you out there who don't. And I don't want you to get mixed up and confused listening to the terms and then forgetting hear what I'm telling you is what that actually means. So you don't want to do that. So right away today, Monday, we have, um, you know, one of the big shifts of the week is, and is the sun going into Leo. Um, and that's where the sun is traditionally in rulership. So that's 
the sign that the sun actually rules. And so Leo and the sun are very, very similar in energy, that means. And you know what I like to say when the sun and Leo is that old song, express yourself, you know, whatever you do, do it good. You know, that's sun and Leo. That's what it wants to do. It wants to bring out the creative spark of who we are. And it comes out in a very willful, strong way. We want to get ourselves out there. We initiate energy. We initiate action. And it's the creativity axis that the Leo is part of. So it's all about self-creativity, right? Really like finding the spark that is our life, the sun is our life journey and Leo has so much energy to do with that and you know we are very very generous we're very very warm and affectionate with others with Leo it's a very extroverted sign we really come out and really want to show ourselves we want to gain respect from others and we want to find the others who we respect too the others who we appreciate the others who you know, have that spark and that zest, that ambition too. Now, Leo can bring up some pride issues. You know, you got to always remember the sun and Mars are the two most egotistical energies of the of our astrology system. And so, like, the big downfall for, e for Leo is to get very arrogant and prideful about what it does and what it sees. It's very uncompromising in its energy. <clears throat> the good thing about that is you know you're always getting honesty out of that. You're getting the truth. You're getting the openness. But a lot of times it can be very unfiltered and it can have attachments to the ideas. So you want to like you want to like give a lot of that energy out, but you know, and and you also want to get it in from people that you respect. And it's a very persistent, fixed energy, Leo. So it's going to go for its goals until the bitter end. The other big thing about Leo, too, is it brings out our naturally inherent leadership qualities. And we all play that role sometime or another. So this is a place where, you know, we can once again shine. Leo is all about, like, you know, knowing what our creative gift is and bringing it out to the world, but at the same time, understanding that everybody else also has a unique creative gift and our whole kingdom together does not function well if everyone is not living up to that creative gift. And that's where it ties into the Aquarius energy on the creativity axis because when everyone is doing that correctly, then society, all of us as a collective, benefit the most. So that's that Leo energy. Now, what's interesting is right away, it gets into what? That opposition to Pluto, which is retrograde at one degree Aquarius right now, and is, you know, pretty much stuck there for quite a while. And, and so that's very intense energy, you guys. Like, you know, first of all, it's an opposition, you know, and an opposition can be the most intense energy because it's forcing us to react to something many times through relationships or situations. Now with Pluto, those relationships or situations can be reaching breakdown points, right? They're reaching points where transformation is required and it can be very intense. It can be very dramatic. It can be very um, um, passionate, you know, and, and so like, you know, what we're seeing is a lot of stuff from our own subconscious and the motives and subconscious of others clearly now in front of us and it's being revealed to us. We're, we're seeing things that are clear and it shows us, you know, where we are in power struggles with certain people, maybe authorities, you know, both the sun and Pluto can represent authorities and they could be very dominating to us or we could be playing that role. We could be the one who's dominating and subjugating others to what we want. So we can get a lot of, in a lot of battles in this kind of energy that the sun Pluto opposition. We have to be very, very careful and, 
and, and end up or end up getting into these long, long power struggles. There's a lot of ambition behind this energy. There's a lot of drive behind this energy, and there's a lot of transformation behind this energy. Things are changing, you know, and and so like, you know, we have to be very, very careful that, you know, we're not ending up non-stop butting heads. Like, we can see where certain relationships basically have reached their end point with this, too, or where certain situations have reached their end point, or where even certain machines or things that we have, objects that we have have reached their end point, anything that has been showing... Um, you know, a road or a path towards breakdown right now, whether it's physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, this is a, a time when it can be brought to its knees and, and that's it. Like, it may have to be left behind. It may have to be purged out. It has to be transformed in some way. So it's a very, very, very intense energy going on here. And we have to try to keep you know, our value system high, not only for ourselves, but for others around us. And this is also an energy where you want to avoid violent people, violent places, because it's got a proclivity for those kind of people to really force their power onto others, even if it becomes actually physical, you know, and, and a lot of times too, just, you know, this is like, you know, this can represent criminal type activity, underworld activity. So just be careful with what you're doing with this energy. Okay, and from there, I just want to mention tomorrow, Tuesday, if you guys remember, yesterday was that incredible full moon today, and we had all those other aspects going on. If you go back to last week's blog, and if you didn't listen to last week's blog, you probably should. Because that full moon, remember, it's a full moon cycle. It's going to be in effect for two to four weeks, very strong. It was a really critical one. Anyway, there was a Mercury square Uranus that day, if you remember, right? And also, and on Tuesday, tomorrow, the moon in Aquarius is going to form another T-square with that Mercury square Uranus. The moon, which is in Aquarius will oppose, will square actually both Uranus and Taurus and Mercury, and or will oppose Mercury and Leo. So it's going to bring that energy back up. And that's the energy of a lot of information flying at us at the same time. All kinds of input coming in. And a lot of it is really really stimulating and exciting and but it's got us like really scattered too it's really hard to process anything because it's coming in so quickly coming in through others coming in through all kinds of information so it's going to be hard to hold on to any of it and it can get us nervous and scattered out right but there is some ingenuity in there you know so make sure that you know you you know, if you find a couple in there that are just like, wow, this is an amazing idea. I really need to latch on to this. You know, that's what you want to do because there can be some really creative intellectual energy with that stuff tomorrow on Tuesday. So now I'm going to jump to Thursday. Thursday is the day that Mercury goes into Virgo. But before it goes into Virgo, it forms a quincunx with, with Neptune, which, if you'll remember, is at the last degree of Pisces, but it did just turn retrograde a couple weeks ago, so it's starting to slide back in that 30th degree. But right, once again, right before Mercury going into another sign, it's going to quincunx um, Neptune. So Thursday's going to be a little bit of an odd day um, on that level, because and, and Friday, too, because there's actually three quincunxes going on over those three days and they you know they're kind of awkward energy quincunxes they require a lot of adjustment a lot of letting go a lot of releasing things and, and so the mercury neptune one on thursday can actually have us like in situations where we're really unclear um or confusing communications with others where um our mind is really being um, dictated by our own fantasy world and dream world and maybe our own emotions and even just oversensitivity 
to the people or environments around us. So that can bring up like really confusing signals to each other. And, and it can be, you know, kind of hard to make connections with other and hard to make sense of what each other are trying, you know, trying to say. So it's like, it's got a real more, you know, a more mellow vibe to it. And it's really better to use it to contemplate and meditate where we are at. You know, it can definitely be one of those ones where almost like the misunderstandings and confusion can undermine some of our confidence, you know, and just get us into places where we're kind of feeling alone and like, wow, you know, like, how did I get to this place and why can't anyone understand me or anything? So it's better, like I said, to really, you know, go, go off and contemplate, meditate, use it to inspire yourself and look at things that you might need to let go of, you know, and try to just release. And then right after that is another big change of the week, Mercury going into Virgo. So once again, just like the sun going into Leo, Mercury going into Virgo is a very strong maneuver for Mercury because it rules um, Virgo and it's also exalted there. It's a double whammy. And I, I really think, you know, Mercury is an androgynous energy. You know, the, the energy of Mercury is very androgynous, you know, and so like to me, it rules both Gemini and Virgo. And to me, this is where it's more in touch with its female side, um, Mercury, when it's when it's here. And, it, and it's when we get into, you know, it's all about the mind for sure. Um, so it's when we get into a very detailed way of looking at things and we really want to perfect things, we can use our mind like a tool to like fine comb through the details of things. So that's really, really good energy. That's why it's, you know, really works well with Mercury and, and Virgo work really well. And it's also one where we're always trying to update our techniques. We're always trying to perfect them and even take them up to a higher level. Even if they're at a higher level, we're kind of going for the PhD or the masters, you know what I mean? And so like, we're always into updating those techniques and we're very smart too with the connection of tools in our hands and our mind like we can use those three things together so you can see like mercury just really loves to be in here now the downfall here is that same energy can make us very judgmental mercury in virgo is judging everything it's left brain logic stuff going on it's the filter of all the creative stuff and it can be put a damper on a lot of creative stuff that's the problem we have to be careful <coughs> about excuse me about becoming too judgmental and too too like almost like um, critical of others and and things that are going on but we can really you know Mercury and Virgo wants to see practical results. That's that's why it's like that. It's like, hey, you know, let, you know, I'm willing to work, you know, but I want to make sure, you know, everything is set up right and we're doing this correctly so that, you know, we get the results that we want. We get concrete results. So it's a really, really good time to study things, to learn things, work with tools, to organize things, to plan things. And if you already have a plan, just going through everything in fine tooth detail. Now, Mercury is not going to stay in Virgo very long because it's going to go retrograde on August 4th. So it's going to go only to about four degrees of Virgo, turn around and spend most of the retrograde in Leo. And then it will go back into Virgo on September 10th. So we're going to get, you know, the second the two, last two thirds of September will be the true Mercury and Virgo, but we're getting a little taste of it now. So we can really use this energy now to really work on those things that are, you know, detailed and with this very sharp, concise mind. Now on Friday, the other big event of the week, Chiron going retrograde. And I talked about it in the monthly. I'm not going to get too much more into it today. Go back to the monthly and check it out. It will be retrograde until December 28th, and so it's joining most of the other planets, the outer planets that are retrograde at this point, Pluto, Neptune, 
and um, and uh, Saturn are all retrograde at this point. Um, and it's starting its retrograde journey at 23 degrees, 32 minutes, and it will go back to exactly 19 degrees of Aries. So still in the middle of Aries. And as I've said over and over, this now we'll get a chance to reflect on a lot of the things that, you know, we need to do in order to heal ourselves to really, you know, so we got to take that inside first for the next few months and really reflect on that and, and think about how we're going to do that. But like I said, check the monthly out for more details. Now that Friday is a weird day though, too. There's those two other quincunxes. The first one is Venus quincunx Saturn. And at the same day, same time, Sun is also sesequadrate Saturn. And this is like a tough one. It really is for Venus because it's looking for love, you know, Venus. And it's not looking for love, looking for acceptance, looking for respect, dignity, things like that from others. And it's not really getting them. And it's really looking for them from people who we respect or have some kind of authority or superiority out of us. And instead of getting that from, a, from them, we kind of get a list of demands instead. And so that can be really, really tough. It can really feel like we get, we're not getting support or they're pulling the rug of support out from under us. And, they, and it feels very unemotional. It feels very cool. It feels like they're a rock that we can't really chip away at. And, you know, and the other problem is like we really get into this um, negative mindset of thinking ambition and duty has to trump everything else. Like, and all kinds of pleasure, anything like that, relationships. Um, it can bring up a lot of different family issues, you know, where we're just feeling stuck because of the, the patterns that our family has us stuck into. Um, so, you know, it, it just really can be very hard and, and we can end up with, you know, what we feel like we're disputes with others, where we're feeling like we just need to separate ourselves, let go, release, and be like, this is the way it can be with this person. Now, interestingly enough, Mercury quincunx Pluto at the same time. And this is like interesting because it really, it gives like a mind that's very indirect. It's a very complicated mind mind, a tricky mind even, um, approaches things from very like odd ways, gets into itself into complicated arrangements with other people, um, gives off an air of like secretive behavior that can get people suspicious of what you're actually up to. So like, so it's like, and, you know, it's a very interesting, and like, and like I said, the Venus Saturn may put us in this kind of mind, where we're like, you know, we're, we're not trusting other people, so we, we may go bring this back in. So a good way to use this energy, especially with the Mercury and Virgo now, it, and with Pluto too, is for research, for really getting deeply into studying something that you're really into. It really, you really can give like an obsessive narrow mind, which can be bad if you're taking it, if you're obsessing about certain things that are negative. But like, and, and the other thing that it can do too is really be coercive about what your beliefs and opinions are. Like you're kind of almost like a propaganda machine, you know, like I'm gonna twist arms to make you see it my way, you know, like, so you gotta be really careful about this, about getting obsessive, about getting narrow-minded, about getting into plots, about creating this wake of suspicious behavior around you, you know. So there's a lot of psychological change that's associated with this energy, too. And really the best thing to go and do is to let go, you know, to let go of things, to release things, you know, to release a lot of these ideas and opinions and stuff that you're obsessing on and maybe let something else new in instead. All right, and the one last thing I want to mention, and I drew it up here on the board this week, is on Sunday we have a T-square. So remember, we got the sun opposite Pluto, right? And the moon in Taurus forms a T-square. So this is what we call our second quarter square, the moon to the sun, which is the in or I mean, it's the, I'm sorry, it's the fourth quarter square, actually, because it's in between the full moon and the new moon. So remember, we had the full moon last week 
in Capricorn, and we're going to get the new moon next week in Leo. So this is like when the moon is at it, the midpoint of that, of, that, of that two-week period. And so the stress point really comes between the sun and the moon. The moon in Taurus is really in that conservative zone where it wants to know that what it's getting is secure, rhythmic, and it's very conservative that way, you know, is not really that interest, interested in introducing change, would rather know that what it's getting is what it's getting. Whereas the son of Leo is like, hey, let's, you know, bring some spark and life and creativity in, in, into this. Let's lighten it up, you know, let's bring some color into this. So that's where the energy is at, at conflict between the sun and Leo and the moon and Taurus. And what when, when, when that's happening, and especially with a T-square with, with Pluto too, it can feel like a lot of issues are pushing on us at once. Family issues, work issues, issues with authorities, issues with social, like four or five things pushing you, and it, the tension level can really build up. The drama level can build up. It can really disconnect our emotions from our will and drive and really create a lot of dissension in our relationships or just like you know we're making waves wherever we go you know is kind of the thing so it's very challenging but the thing is if we can stay on top of it there's a lot of energy there to tap into it's a good day to do something physical you know and whatever we're ambitious about we can really channel a lot of this energy into but it is very very intense energy this t square next sunday all right so that's what i got this week next week we're going to get a new moon at in leo at 13 degrees and mercury is going to go retrograde for the second time this year mainly in the fire sign of leo again and venus is going to go into virgo where she is very challenged. That's a tough sign for Venus to go through. So that's what I'll be talking about next week. This is Matt Lawton. This is the Astrological Wings Channel. This is a free video blog that I've been doing for years. And right now, you are going to pass the link on to somebody else for me, right? And when you need a reading, you're going to get in touch with me. Or if you know someone else that does, you're going to refer them to my website here, www.astrologicalwings.com. There's my email, mattview823 at gmail.com. Or if you'd like to support the blog and get a chance to win a free reading, you can send $5 to my Venmo at Matthew Dash Lawton. Every $5 you send gets you one chance to win a free reading, and I think I'm going to have it done quarterly. So um, it looks like what I'll do is I'll probably do it in a right when September 21st around that time so i really appreciate all your guys support um you know re please pass it on remember it's available on the podcast too on instagram too um if you guys need any help any professional services please check it out and remember all the old blogs are embedded at the um, astrological wings too so if you need to check the full moon one out from last week or if you need to check out the monthly one, they're all there too. And we're living in interesting times. You should check out the quarterly one I did for the U.S. chart, especially with what's going on with Biden and Trump and everything. You know, there's a lot of that stuff as possibility in there. But anyway, all that stuff you can check out. Thanks for all your support. I appreciate you all. Next week, we'll look at that new moon and Mercury retro and Venus into Virgo. And I'll see y'all then.